folks, this is Jay with Colony Hills Homestead. Uh, one of our last videos we talked about incubating. I would like to go on now and, and speak about the brooding process. We're in the back of my quail uh, barn. And as you can tell here, uh, if you can see, this is one of my brooders. Um, I, I'm all about do it yourself, you know, keep it, keep it cheap. So I'm gonna show you some of the things around me here that I've done, but this is simply a watering trough that you can get, you know, at your, your ag stores. It is a four by two along this back wall here. Um, I have a six by two and a half, um, which I do have holes drilled and hardware cloth in the middle to where I can divide it. Um, whether I want to divide and, you know, pick out the roosters from the hens or whether I want to have two different breeds of paternity quail in there, um, I can have them separated. So as you can see here, I have electricity run that, that hangs down from our rafters here, um, three prongs so that I can have my heat mounts and electricity here uh, for them. I like to brood my birds for three weeks and then for the next three weeks, I put them in a grow out pen so they have more room. You gotta think about the square footage with birds. Uh, when you're brooding birds, it's about half of what you uh, you can put about twice as many, let's say it that way, twice as many as you could per square foot and as adult birds. Um, but you have to listen to your quail. They're gonna tell you what they need when they're brooding. So let's get into that. Um, so I use fine pine flakes as my bedding in my brooders. You need to keep that fresh. You need to keep that clean. Um, it will ball up on their feet um, due to the, the quail droppings water, food, they are kind of messy. Um, so you'll need to get, keep that clean and fresh. I would say at least once a week, you need to change that out. And it makes for good compost uh, at your browns. So um, according to how many birds you got in here, um, obviously is how much water or feed you'll need to put. Now, quail, in their, especially in the first week, I don't know why, you know, I've, I've, heard people call it scuba diving, but quail will drown themselves in the water. So according to what type of water you have, if you're using a uh, regular uh, chicken water or something that's larger, you will need to put uh, pebbles, rock, marbles in the bottom to make the water available to them, but to make it where it's so shallow that they can't drown themselves, if that makes sense. Okay. Now I have since found quail waterers for these these uh, brooders, and I'm going to show you one now. It is impossible for them to drown themselves in this small of a trough. Okay, the troughs that I was talking about are twice this big, and they they can drown themselves. So this is, as you can see from the the barrel of the water water itself, this is a very very small trough that I can't even get my big old finger in. I can't even touch the bottom. So they will not drown in this if you can find this. Okay. Now the birds that I've recently uh, incubated, I had them in a warmer environment. It is winter time here in East Texas. And I was wanting to, uh, since I didn't have very many birds, I had them in a different type, uh, small tote brooder that, I, that I've made, and I will show you that at the end of the video. But they're two weeks old now, they're feathering out, so I'm going to add them to the larger brooder and give them some more space, all right? Um, heat. I could give you numbers, I could tell you how much you need to come down each day on that, um, but I will tell you this, if you are, if you watch your quail, they're gonna tell you what they need, okay? If they're all huddled up in a ball up under the light, they're too cold. If they are at the end that the light can't reach, they're too hot, okay? If your birds are scattered about the environment in your brooder, it's just right. That's where they need to be. Now, if you keep your brooder too cold, it's very easy to kill your birds in two ways. Number one, they get too cold. Number two, they will pile on each other to utilize each other's body heat 
and the poor little quail on the bottom that can't fend for the set, they're not strong as the other quail, whatever, they will suffocate the bottom layer. Okay? I've seen this happen. So try, try to keep them as warm as they need to be. Don't burn them up. You need to try to keep your feed in water, I'd say within about eight inches of your direct light. Um, quail or, baby quail are lazy. They get under that light, they get that warmth, and they forget, hey, I gotta eat, I gotta, I gotta drink, and they can sit right there and dehydrate. So, new birds, I will put my feeder in, and I will actually add a few hills, if you would like to call it that, mounds of feed in other places directly on my flake so that they can find those and, and they'll scratch and they'll eat. Um, but fresh water, guys, I cannot, I cannot tell you enough, fresh water is very important. I'll give you a little tip. Um, I, I do this with my chicks. Um, I'm not saying it's necessary, but it does, does help them. I feel like with their electrolytes and stuff, um, I give them like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar per gallon. And when I mix that gallon, then that's what I'll utilize to put into my quick uh, quail water bottles, okay? I use a 28% game bird feed. It's very important. You need to have your chicks between 24 and 30% protein and all the way up until uh, some people run it up to 10 weeks. I run it up to eight. But the first week of that, even that crumble may be a little big for them. I put, for the first at least five days, I put that crumble in a blender and I blend it up a little finer for them. Again, they'll tell you what they need, okay? Um, you'll put that feed in there, if it's gone just like that, then, then you know you'll need to start adding more feed. Um, I feed my brooding quail twice a day and check their water at least twice a day to do the refills. Um, all my other feeders and all my other birds are on automatic, you know, waters and all this. But you got to watch your birds closely, guys. Okay? So I'm going to show you a few things that I have here. I've showed you the water. I'm going to use this style of a feeder. They are going from an open platform feeder to this feeder here so that they will make less of a mess and have less waste now. I am no longer blending their food. They're able to handle the uh, crumble straight from the bag. This is a top that I've built for this feeder. Just one by twos, hardware cloth, Stapled down, it will fit right on top of this brooder. And as you can see at the top here, I've made a cone with hardware cloth. That's where my light is going to sit is on this cone. Now, that's because they're, they're two weeks out. If they were brand new, I could set the light right on this hardware cloth. And as they adjust, I could raise them up to this cone. And then even later, I could hang them from a rafter or something else. Now, I will show you the setup because I do have some birds that are going into this brooder today. So it's uh, one that we've done a video with that I was doing some experimenting with some colors um, and that nature. So they're, they're in a tote brooder here. I'm gonna transfer them over. And I'm gonna show you some of those birds and show you some of the colors that we come out with. Um, and I'm gonna show you my setup. And comments, questions, put them below. We answer them daily. Uh, I ask that you subscribe, hit the bell notifications, like, share our videos, so that we can bring more to you. Okay guys, I wanna show you a quick uh, look at my setup here. So you can see I have my feed in my, my trough and I have put several little piles of feed around. Here's my water set up. Let me explain why I have it on a small piece of wood. That is a piece of pallet wood that I've cut. I have learned that if you set that down in the flakes, your quail will 
kick up the flakes into your water, which makes a mess in itself. But then what happens if there's enough flakes get up there, it'll cause a wicking effect and your water will wick into your brooder. So I found that by just raising that, that little half inch, um, that, that helps them a lot. So on to putting the birds in the brooder. Thank you.